Welcome and thank you for joining us on It Is Written Canada. It was a glorious morning. The rays were shining into our SUV and my daughter and I were on our way to an appointment. I was driving her and we were just chatting away. And it was all too soon. We got her to her appointment and she had to get out of the vehicle. And as I led her out of the vehicle, I just felt so lonely. Um, I don't know what it is, but I just hate being alone. And uh, so I just wanted to get rid of the silence. And so I, I went to reach for the radio to turn it on. And I was like, ah, I can't be tempted to do that. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to pray. So I decided I was going to pray out loud. And so I started praying out loud to the Lord. And there I was driving down the freeway, just looked like I was talking to myself, probably to other people. And I was praying to God. But as I was listening to myself, I started to realize there was something different. When I was talking to my daughter, I had no problem with my communication, but talking to God, it sounded more like a to-do list. And as I was going through my to-do list with the Lord, I just stopped and I said, God, what's wrong with me? How come I can't talk to you like I mm. talk to my daughter, mm. like I talk to my wife, like I talk to my friends? And I just had a very, very distinct thought in my head it's because you have a problem with friendship. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Lord, what do, you, what do you mean I have a problem with friendship? And it wasn't a condemning voice. It was more of an inviting voice. And so I said, Lord, show me. Show me how to open up. What's wrong? And the Lord just gave me this impression that it's because I have been hurt by other people, that I, have, I keep people at arm's length, and that I was keeping God at arm's length. And so I said, Lord, I don't want to do that anymore. Show me how to open up to you. And he said, you're doing it right now. Now you're opening up to me. And so I started to just talk to God and, and share with him. And it was, it was so exciting because after that, I wanted to go home and read my Bible. I wanted to talk to God further. I wanted to spend time alone with him and really open up my heart to him. And so we've been talking to, to Jem Caster, and he's here with us again. And he's been talking to us about prayer and how, how prayer is, is, is a relationship. It's like the breath of the soul. Yeah. That's right, Michael. It's like a, a two-way conversation, like mm. a dialogue. Yeah. Us talking to God and mm. Him talking to us through His Word. Amen. It's not a monologue. And so many mm. times we do it like that, like Mike was saying with the to-do list, or we pray when there's an emergency mm -hmm. or we urgently need Him. Mm -hmm. But that's not what prayer is about. Prayer is about having that friendship and that mm -hmm. relationship with God. So, Jim, why don't you tell us about your prayer room experience? <laughs> so, like what you've said, that's that's how I pray before. I give God not just my to-do, my shopping list and my laundry list. <laughs> <laughs> All the time that we that we are having a good time, a blessed time, we forget about Him. But when it's it's difficult time, we we remember him. But for me, it it happened quite quite unusual way because in my downtime, in my depressing time, I kind of shut God off. Mm -hmm. So I was I turned away from God. I I even pointed my finger to God. At, I said to him, "Is this what you do with people who who gave their heart to you?" So I kind of have a, a cooling off moment with God until one person somehow invited me to, to attend this faith camp. And, uh, and my friends from Jesus for Asia is the one who's, who's organizing this. And, uh, and this person, who's a very nice lady, asked me to, to lead out in the prayer room and I'm thinking, I don't want to be in the prayer room right now. I don't even want to talk to God. Mm -hmm. And then she gave testimony of how people were moved by hearing the testimony in the prayer room. Instead of spending only five minutes, they spent three hours. And then there's another girl who's 16 years old who spent eight hours in the prayer room and thinking, this is horror for me. <laughs> like, I don't want to be in the prayer room for like even an hour, or even 30 minutes. Because before, my prayer life was just like five minutes for the whole day. Total. The moment I get up, the moment I eat my breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the moment I sleep, that's five totals, five five minutes yeah. total. And for me, for to be in the prayer room was was like a torture. But one thing happened while I was there, kneeling down with my knees and that lady and me, and I praise God that there's just the three of us. 
the moment I begin praying, and I did not even want to pray. I was just praying for the sake of praying. And we have a very short, uh, what's this, uh, conversational prayer. Like one, uh, one sentence or two sentence prayer. It's not a long prayer, it's not a long list of prayer. And we started out with praise, thanking God or praising God for what He has done. Mm -hmm. And I did not realize the moment I prayed the second prayer that I have not really acknowledged Him in my life. I did not really thank Him in my life. All the things that I'm giving Him are just problems, but I've never acknowledged Him. The first two prayers that I prayed broke my heart. I, I was sobbing. I was sobbing like, like a little child. And then I realized, wow, I have built that wall between me and God. Mm -hmm. And I thought right now that, that all of us have built this wall. And I think all of us need this. And the Holy Spirit could not work in our hearts if we still have these walls. So after that experience, I could not wait. I went one person to another. I've, I've been, you know me, I'm not a shy person. <laughs> I'm quite shameless. So I went from one person to another and I asked them, hey, have you been to the prayer room? Have you been to the prayer room? And I did not want my experience to be like exclusive to mine. I want them to experience. And this is one thing with God. The moment we taste Him, yeah. the moment we experience how good He is, yeah. we cannot keep it to ourselves. Yeah, I always think of it as a restaurant. You go mm. to a good restaurant, you eat the food, <laughs> and you say, hey, I have no problem sharing that with mm. someone else. Mm. I can easily mm. tell them, hey, this was a great place. Go and eat right over there. Mm. And so now you're sharing because mm. you have tasted and seen, yes. as the Bible said, that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. And now you're saying, hey, go over there. Eat, yeah. eat a good meal, right? Mm. Yeah. And it's not a duty. No. It's a privilege. It's, a privilege. it's something that you're excited for because you've experienced something that's delicious. I don't know if it's just a Filipino thing. <laughs> it's, it yeah. should be our thing. Like of the course. moment you taste something, you cannot keep it to yourself. Of course. So, and this is the reason why this is the, the thing that fires me up, that encourages me, that inspires me to do this prayer ministry because I know the Lord did not just heal me. The Lord restored me. Yeah. The Lord somehow inspired me. The Lord somehow put me back together again yeah. in His presence. And that's why right now, everywhere I go, I'm, I'm just so excited to share to people. Yes. And seeing people see it, it's just mind-blowing. It gives you that, that desire to seek more of Jesus. Yes. And now I could see it in places where I go, in Australia, in, in Malaysia, in Indonesia, in India. A GYC, a mm -hmm. generation of, just imagine young people, young people at the age of like 15 or even 14 or even younger than that, to even adults coming together, mm -hmm. praying together at 6 a.m., more than 1,000 people gathering together. And some people will tell me, Brother Jem, I only signed up for this just for the prayer room. Just imagine wow. that, yeah. seeing seeing the joy in their faces, like every every prayer session, every day, mm. and we even have like an all uh, not an all night prayer, but a midnight prayer. This last GYC, mm -hmm. starting from ten thirty to twelve thirty in the morning. Wow! And we ended not twelve thirty. We ended like ten minutes before one o'clock. And when I ended. The young people were telling me, why did you have to end it? <laughs> and there's one person who I met like a, a week after, like two weeks after, he said, Jem, I'm sorry, but I hated you during that time when you <laughs> ended the prayer room experience. I said, why? I said, because that was the most amazing, powerful experience I've had, and you have to end it. Wow. And I told the person, yeah. I have to lead out another prayer session at 5.45 in the morning. Yes. Seeing this just brings so much joy in your heart. Mm -hmm. And back home, Philippines, they start at five in the morning five in the morning coming together, 600 plus young people coming together and praying together. Mm. And one person asked me, so Jem, why do you have to do that every day? Why do you have to do it every day? Isn't that enough that you have, you have prayed and the Lord has heard and answered your prayer? And then this beautiful thought came to me. And there's this beautiful quote that says, prayer is the breath of the soul. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like air. Yeah. It did not say prayer is the bread of the soul. You could live like how many how many weeks or even a month without without eating. Yeah. You could not you could live without water for how many weeks, but you could not live without air. Yeah. For just 
minutes. Yes. And then yes. I, I remember if we live by faith, it's like living, living by prayer, living by air. Yes. Yeah. The to air do that it. you breath. Yeah. That 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 you breathe yesterday will not be useful for the air that you breathe no. yes. today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every day we have to ask, get a new new baptism of mm. the Holy Spirit, be Amen. filled by the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, like a fresh, mm. a fresh breath every single morning. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, we're going to take a little break now. We're going to talk further about this topic after this. Satisfied was the name of that song. Jesus satisfies my longings. Through his life, I now am saved. So, Jem, you've been talking about how God has been there for you and has how he has satisfied your longings for food, for travel, mm -hmm. for enjoyment, through sharing the message 
uh, with people around the world. Mm. And you're sharing it right now with us. And I thank you for that. But God hasn't only taken care of your needs. Mm. He has also used you to take care of the needs of others. So you want to talk about that? Oh, God has been so good. Like uh, seeing what the Lord is doing in our lives. Yeah. Although well, I, I was thinking before the, before the missionary work, like, uh, how am I going to survive? And yeah. then the Lord is somehow taking me out of that, of that thought that mm -hmm. he's not just capable of providing for you. Yes. There's a lot of things more that you can do with God. And the Lord is expanding our thoughts that the more we focus on ourselves, the sadder we get. Ah. It's we were born, we were made, we were created to share, yeah. to share what the Lord has, has given in our lives. And, and I believe that that beautiful quote or that verse that says, the more you give, the more you'll receive. Yes. Which is so yeah. true because yeah. the principle of heaven is give, give, give. Give, yeah. So you live to give. You live and to give. And by giving, you're living, yeah. yeah. Truly living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the only way to live, yeah. by following what the heaven has, has been asking us to do. Yes. So seeing what is happening in the Philippines, there is this group, uh, it's like the GYC, mm -hmm. the Generation of Youth for Christ, but in the Philippines, it's called the Philippine Youth for Christ. Okay. And, uh, and back in the Philippines, it's even quite challenging because, you know, Philippines is a third world country. Mm. So not much uh, young people could, uh, could afford to go to conferences like this, especially if your if your uh, like registration fee is is not the usual thing that that they could afford. You've been to the Philippines yes, since it's, eleven, it's, so it's, it's very expensive. Very <laughs> it's, expensive. I mean, for for them, for them, I it's mean, expensive. the average professional person over there is making like three hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. right? That's yes. that's not very much. You can't yeah. really go to a conference on mm. that. And then if you're not earning a professional salary, then yeah. you really can't afford anything. But these young people are wanting to go. Yes. Like uh, the regular registration fee for, for youth conferences, even if it's like $3, that's too much. Mm. And our conference fee is uh, is $35. Wow. Okay. That's, 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 that's over, over their head. Yeah. Over their head. Yeah. And and seeing how these young people sacrifice, yes. they will they will go do extra jobs. Like even do caroling or serenading when you're in the yes, Philippines, serenading yeah. just to earn extra for them to go. They will gather up uh, empty water bottle, plastic stuff. They'll go to, they'll go waste and <laughs> and gather scrap metals yes. just to be, just to be in, in, in the conference. And some of them do not even have like a round trip ticket. They mm. only have one way ticket and they go there wow. hoping that the Lord will provide. And the Lord just honors the faith of these young people and seeing seeing this, this dedication, mm. your heart is moved. And I bet that God's heart is moved as well. I yes. know for a fact that the moment we put in such effort to know the Lord, to give our all to the Lord, the Lord is moved by it and the Lord is blessing them. Yes. Like testimony after testimony, like young people will tell me, Kuya Jem, do you know that that I came here with, with nothing and the Lord the Lord now has, has provided a fare for me going back home. Wow, yeah. And seeing my experience is being duplicated in the lives of these young people. And now I could see that the God who provided for this little missionary is capable of providing for the whole young people, for everyone. Yes. And God has been doing a lot of powerful things through this, uh, to this youth conference. And, and imagine coming up with, with funding for this youth conference is, is, not, uh, is not easy for Filipinos. And, uh, and we've been trying to do it our way. Mm -hmm. The other person's way, or uh, or man's way, and uh, we've been stressed out three years in a row. We've been stressed out, and it's funny because every time we do conference like this, our our VP for finance will not be able to smile for the next two months. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll, I'll tell her, you know what? God will take care of this. And one time he told me, you're only saying that God will take care, but I'm the one who's facing all the problems. <laughs> and then, because you were in a deficit like you, because we of, were, mm. we were, it will take us like two months to pay off after the event is done. And then three conferences ago, we were, we were up to here, I'm thinking, what shall we do? 
So we gathered together. What's the best thing that you can do when you don't know what to do? Pray. Kneel down and pray. Yeah. And coming together and praying together really brings so much, so much peace and mm -hmm. so much blessing. There's this beautiful quote that says, the power given will be proportionate to the unity of the members and their love for God and love for one another. Mm -hmm. And the Lord somehow taught us, then follow my instruction. And we saw the Lord's leading, the, the Lord's guidance. And the Lord had us sacrifice our own little amount of money. I'm thinking, Lord, even if you squeeze us dry, we could not even pay one-tenth of this whole conference fee. And you know what the Lord did? The Lord blessed the little sacrifices, the little surrender that we have. It's like five loaves of bread and two fish. Mm. <laughs> but the first conference that we relied on God, absolute reliance on God, we were able to pay the whole amount of the conference a week before. Wow. Wow. And before it was two or three two months, months after, yeah. Then by the way, still paying, yeah. yeah. By the way, we moved to a location away from Manila, and it, this will cost us like three, five times, or ten times more. But this time we were able to pay a week before. The next year, it was even more expensive because the young people requested, can we start Monday, not Wednesday? So when you have a longer days, the accommodation and all will be more expensive. Mm -hmm. And we pay our, our main venue $100 per hour. And for us, for Philippines, it, here it's, it's, not, it's not expensive. Back home, it is expensive. It is a total of like $30,000 event. That's a lot. That's a lot for us, and we're not soliciting. We're not asking for donation because the Lord compelled us. I can provide. So that next year, my knees were shaking. I'm thinking, <laughs> Lord, this is more expensive compared to last year. But guess what the Lord did? The Lord had us the amount that's needed three months before. Wow. Yeah. Three months before. And yeah. this year was the most interesting. Because last year, I was, I was afraid and thinking, Lord, we don't seem to need you because you already provided the amount three months before the event. And the Lord gave us a new challenge this year. We were short of, we were short of $4,000 before, before the event. We prayed and prayed and asked, Lord, this is your work. Mm -hmm. You have to do this. And you know what? Our monies begin to multiply in the envelope. Wow. Like 40,000 became 75,000. And we could not understand where it's coming from. And there are so much needs that, that we would, and I'm thinking, Lord, how are we gonna do this? And the Lord kept on reminding us, absolute reliance. Take my word for it. And we kept on praying, kept moving forward. Even there's a lot of, of missionaries that wants to come mm -hmm. and, and we have to sponsor them. And I told them, this is the Lord's money and I don't know where he'll, he'll get it, but he will provide. And we kept on praying. At the end of the event, everything was paid off. And you know what's amazing? We have, we have an overflow. We have excess. That's and then, good. and then I called, I called the the VP for finance a month ago, and I asked her, "Hey, how much is the excess that we have?" And then she said, "Brother Jem, you would not believe it. We have an excess of more than four thousand five hundred US. Wow. Mm. We were short of that amount, and now we have an excess." And she said, by the way, she is employed in one of the top accounting firms back in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and she could not balance the whole thing. So there's like a $3,500 that I could not account. What, what is the explanation for that? Mm -hmm. Nothing. It's, God gave you 12 <laughs> baskets of leftovers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? It's a 12 baskets overflow. Whoa. And this is one thing that I realized. Like, if there's no overflow, that's not what God's promise. That's not what God's way. It's not God's way. If it's God's way, there's always gonna be a 12 baskets overflow. And I was reminded of this beautiful verse to close. Mm -hmm. It says, to everyone who offers himself to the Lord for service, withholding nothing, yes. is given the power for the attainment of measureless results. Yes, yes. Measureless. Yeah. So if you could measure it, that's not God's way yet. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. And we have come to the end, but we do have an offer for our viewers. And if you would like this book, it's called Satisfied. And it's really what we've been talking about, how God satisfies our needs. And, and if you would like to receive this little book, 
you can just um, write to us or, or um, contact us through the information that's on the screen and uh, and we'll send this to you absolutely free mm. and we will also pray for you if you have any prayer requests call us and, and let us know about those mm -hmm. so Jim thank you very very much uh, mm, would you like to have a God. prayer for us as as we uh, are closing together let us pray okay. oh dear God loving Heavenly Father you are an awesome God a powerful God a loving and a faithful God. Lord, I pray that may you remind each one of us, may you remind our viewers, our listeners, that uh, you are this God that we serve. And Lord, I ask that uh, you please take us out of our dependence upon ourselves and help us to re absolutely rely upon you. You gave us so many reasons to trust you. So Lord, please help us to trust you. Please pour upon us a full measure of your spirit. For we ask this in the loving name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jim, thank you once again for coming and sharing with us how you absolutely rely on God. And He's such a powerful God and what Amen. He has done for you and what He can do for everyone, for Amen. all of us, even for our viewers. Mm. We serve an awesome, powerful God and we just need to absolutely rely on Him. Amen. What I have learned from this uh, series of three episodes with you that we've spent together is that God wants us to receive much mm. in order that we might impart much. Amen. And so thank you very much for sharing that with us, Jim. Friends, as we close off, I just want to remind you again of the words of Jesus where He says, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Canada. All across this vast and diverse nation, people are searching for meaning, acceptance, and hope. But in an increasingly secular nation where nearly one in four Canadians have no religious affiliation, many people simply don't know how to find happiness and peace for their lives. That is why we are here. As the premier media ministry for the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Canada, It Is Written seeks to offer people more than this world can offer, the good news of Jesus Christ. Each week, we invite countless people to enter into a closer relationship with Jesus through our television program, aired across the nation on CTV, 3ABN, Hope Channel, and many more. In this way, we're able to reach into people's homes and meet them right where they are. Buying this much airtime is no small thing. But the continued commitment of donors just like you keeps the gospel on the air in Canada. Our commitment to spreading the gospel means that we do everything we can to maximize the impact of your financial gift. A gift of $5 is enough to get an episode of our show into 50 households across the nation. $10 is enough to provide a personal heart-changing Bible lesson to five individuals. Your generosity amplified by the Holy Spirit, has the power to change lives. Canadians everywhere are searching for something more. By partnering with It Is Written, together we can help them find it. To support this life-changing ministry, please send your financial contributions to It Is Written, Box 2010, Oshawa, Ontario, L1H 7V4, or you can call us at 1-888-225-5449. You can also visit us online at www.itiswrittencanada.ca and click on the Donate button.